Hi everyone, one more come to Business Life. Coming up, inflation falls for the fourth month running this year to 41.2%. We will hear from the government statistician. We assess the contributions of the 13 divisions for the overall inflation of 41.2% for the month of April 2023. We continue to see the dominance of food and non-alcoholic be beverages in contributing to the overall inflation rate of 41.2%. Bank of Ghana appeals to banks to reduce lending rates to correspond with dropping inflation rates. Plus, Joy Business Van heads to Suhum in the eastern region to visit Fair Africa, the Ghanaian social business producing 100% organic chocolates. We've got details of these and many others lined up for you. Please stay. Hello, welcome back. I am Pius Kojobaka. Straight to our very first story. The year-on-year -year inflation has seen a fall for the fourth month to 41.2% in April 2023 from the 45% recorded in March. This has extended the disinflation process since January this year. According to the Ghana Statistical Service, both food inflation and non-food inflation dipped last month. Here is government statistician Professor Samuel Kobneni. The division that recorded the deflation for the month of April 2023 was transport with a deflation of 1.1%. This can be attributed to the consistent downward variation that we see in the, in the prices of diesel and petrol that we started recording sometime in November last year. On a month-on-month -month basis, the division that recorded the highest rate of inflation was food and non-alcoholic beverages that recorded a rate of inflation of 4.3% for the month of April 2023. This was followed by health and followed by furnishing, with health recording a month-on-month -month inflation of 2.9%, followed by furnishing household equipment 2.1% for the month of April 2023. We assess the contributions of the 13 divisions for the overall inflation of 41.2% for the month of April 2023. We continue to see the dominance of food and non-alcoholic be be beverages in contributing to the overall inflation rate of 41.2%. Specifically, food and non-alcoholic beverages contributed more than 50% of the rate of inflation that was recorded for the month of April 2023. Specifically, the contribution of food and non-alcoholic beverages for the month of April 2023 was 50.9%. We identified seven out of the 13 divisions that contributed less than 10% of the overall inflation. So these seven out of the 13 um, divisions, specifically personal care, recreation and others, information and communication, education, health, restaurant and insurance and financial services. If you sum up the contribution of these seven out of the 13 divisions, they contributed less than 10% of the overall inflation that was recorded for the month of April 2023. The converse means that six out of the 13 divisions contributed more than 90% more than of the overall inflation that was, that, that was recorded for the month of April 2023. Professor Samokobne Nim there. Now, meanwhile, the Bank of Ghana is appealing to commercial banks to cut lending rates since the country's macroeconomy, such as inflation, continues to improve in performance. Speaking at the launch of a collaboration between APSA Bank and MasterCard Foundation to provide loans to small-scale businesses at 10%, Second Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Elsie Ado Awaji, indicated that the consistent drop in inflation is a sign of improvement in the economy. And Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mark Bedou Abouad, joins us live on Zoom um, for his reaction to this latest development. Grateful, Mark, you could join me on Business Live. Now, we are seeing inflation come down. With the downtrend, do you think this is a good news for businesses um, since high inflation also affects operations of um, most businesses? Yeah, um, thank you very much. I think it's a good news that we are witnessing a decline in the inflation. And of course, it's good news for businesses because inflation largely affects both their productive costs and also their consumers' ability to buy goods. 
because their purchasing power are largely reduced when inflation is high. So with inflation coming down, the likelihood that the demand for goods and services will go up. Also, the cost of production also uh, go down. So inflation, uh, for me, is an enemy to every economy. And that's why we are all fighting and ensuring that it will bring inflation down. So it's a good news mm. for businesses. Well, it is the expectation of the Bank of Ghana that banks will cut lending rates, as we rightly um, read out to you, um, as inflation, you know, uh, uh, turns downwards. Now, do you see that happening soon so that businesses can have access to cheaper credits? Well, I, I, I don't think that the reduction in inflation will necessarily cause a reduction in lending rates. Because lending rate is a derived rate and the number of factors uh, play a critical role in uh, the lending rate coming down. And one key uh, determinant is the policy rate. If the policy rate remains as high as it is of 29.5, we don't expect that the lending rate will come down. What we expect the central bank to do is now respond to the positive reduction in inflation rate and also reduce the policy rate. If they don't reduce the policy rate, I don't think the banks will respond by reducing their lending rate. If the central bank should reduce the policy rate, then the banks will respond positively and also reduce the lending rate. So now the responsibility is on the central bank to ensure that with all this macroeconomic improvement, with stability in the foreign exchange market, with inflation coming down, there's no justification for the central bank to, to keep the policy rate at 29.5 or even think of increasing it. If they want to reduce the lending rate, then the policy rate should first come down. And I think banks will respond appropriately, even though we know that prices are sticking downwards in, in, in Ghana, that the reduction in policy rates may not immediately uh, result in the reduction in the lending rates. But with time, I know there will be some positive response and the lending rates will come down. So the Bank of Ghana shouldn't think that this, the inflation is going down, so banks necessarily will reduce their lending rate. They will not until the policy rate and other factors also improve. Mm. Come Monday, the committee will begin its uh, meetings. And of course, the general expectations from your side and other business groups um, are that um, you're looking forward to a reduction or a better still maintenance. What happens if that doesn't happen? No, we are hoping it will, it will happen because there's, as there's no basis for the central bank to keep the policy rate at 29.5. The reason why they have kept it at this level is that inflation was high. In December, it was about, about 54%. Now it's come down to 41.2%. So why would you keep the policy rate at 29? It should come down. It's, it's, it's a difficult situation for businesses if policy rate is high. Lending rate would definitely be high. It is difficult for businesses to borrow and invest into the real sector. We want to grow the economy. The only way out is to ensure that businesses have access to funding at a lower rate. That is what we are asking from the central bank. So they should reduce the policy rate in their next meeting. They cannot and they should not even make an attempt to increase it because it will not be in the interest of businesses and the economy of Ghana. Well, Mark, yesterday, Fitch um, Solutions projected that we are likely to see an increase in the policy rate. And again, yesterday, the Bank of Ghana gave, uh, gave an indication that Indeed, um, they are likely to increase the policy rate. I just want you to tell me what you intend to do as a business group by way of strategizing in case um, the Bank of Ghana goes ahead to increase the policy rate. Well, I, I, I think that for some time now, there's been a lot of strategies and cost cutting. Uh, there's been a lot of cutting down of production and also trying to reduce costs. So definitely, if um, the policy rate should go up, which will affect the lending rates, then what it means is that businesses will not be able to go, go to expand or even finance their uh, expenditure. And then that means that uh, activities will, will go down and the economy uh, will suffer. So now we have been in this system for, for a long time. So we have ways of ensuring that we are able to sustain ourselves uh, into the future until a certain time that things will improve. As I said earlier, that they shouldn't increase the policy rate. In fact, you can't fight inflation, which is cost push, with the policy rate. And from the beginning of last year up to this time, it's quite recently that we have seen inflation coming down. And it's not as a because of the high uh, uh, policy rate. 
is because the supply side has improved and we've seen a lot of food production going up and people are able to buy food. So the reduction in inflation rate cannot be attributed largely to increase in policy rate. It can't stem uh, the inflation. We should look at the supply side for constraint, increase production. And also what we are experiencing now is because the past three effects of the increase in fuel, the past three effects of the um, uh, other increases has now um, materialized. That's why we are, we are now seeing a reduction in uh, the, the, the inflation rate. Mm. Now, with the increase of the introduction of new taxes, the likelihood that prices of goods and services will go up is also there. And the inflation, the reduction may not be as we're experiencing now. The reduction, even though we may have it, will be at a reduced rate. So the policy rate, for me, is not necessarily fighting inflation. If I look at the supply size constraint, then ensuring that um, we tame inflation. It can be a complementary policy, but it should not be the main policy in controlling inflation. All right. Thank you very much, Mark Bidou Abouaji, for your time here on Business Life. He's the Chief Executive Officer of the uh, Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, speaking to us there. All right. So let's move on to some other stories. And the Chamber of Fertilizer Ghana, is calling for a thorough audit of the Planting for Food and Jobs program. The call follows a media report which said that newly appointed Minister for Food and Agriculture, Brian e. Champon, has suspended subsidies enjoyed under the program to ascertain its impact on fertilizer and seeds supplied to farmers. According to the Chief Executive Office of the Chamber, Prince Adipa, there must be review to ensure that fertilizer supplied to affordable and available to farmers. It is a good move um, to a large extent, provided um, we will take advantage of the opportunity that force us to be able to review um, the program as it has been, or as it's where, from when um, it started up to this uh, very moment when um, there's a call for a review and a restructure of, 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 of the same. Uh, so we expect to, you know, see you not know, dramatic changes that will really you know, um, help the entire uh, supply, supply system of fertilizer in this country to help our, product, our, our production. The only challenge we have really is with the um, timing because we feel it's coming a little bit late in the day when the southern season has already taken off and um, we find to, I mean, getting ourselves you know, uh, ready for I mean, we, we've actually started production. I mean, farmers have already planted and all that. And so they are already feeling the heat of the high cost of the fertilizer on the market because subsidy has not been implemented. Well, when you call for an audit to be done, how differently do you want things to be done under the Planting for Food and Jobs program? Yeah, so we need to learn from our mistakes. Um, uh, from from where we started off. So PFJ has run for a, a, a number of years. And so if now we are calling for um, suspension of it because we feel not all has been well with it, with the, with the program, mm. then we need to measure the objectives of what it was supposed to have um, uh, attained, okay, as against the real results that we have achieved. And so before we move to any new pro program at all, it will be very helpful to have an impact assessment report, okay, or audit conducted on the PFJ as, as it were, and be able to bring out all the challenges that, or identify all the challenges that bedevil the program. And then from that point, we can be sure that at least we have our hands on the problems and now devise very cogent uh, strategies that will mitigate those problems so that we don't go in cycles trying to, you know, um, um, achieve what may not be achievable eventually. We'll continue with the rest of the stories. And the managing director of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Gyogiva, says she supports calls to allow Ghana to have increased access to financial support from the fund. The governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Enes Addison, is leading a block of developing countries 
to embark on reforms aimed at improving voting rights and access to more resources. Speaking with CNBC Africa, Madame Gilgiva said that this move will not out of place, it's not out of place and should be supported. This is a membership issue. The management of the fund respects the will of the membership. Of course, we would like to see a representation that gives fair picture of the world as it is today, not as it was when the IMF was created. And we are very encouraged. I personally listened very carefully during our spring meetings of those voices that say the small members, not only the low income countries, but small island economies that may be middle income countries, they should not be squeezed any further. Their, uh, their role has to be amplified, not suppressed. When we kicked off, you you know you gave us a picture of the of the global um, economic environment, and it's quite turbulent, um, as we all see. What would be an appropriate mix of you know fiscal and monetary policies for African um, governments to keep growth from further flagging off? Well, the, the, um, Africa is not powerless. There is much that Africa can do. First, Africa can strengthen revenue mobilization. We still see levels of tax uh, way below where they should be to finance education, social services, infrastructure development uh, in Africa. Uh, and on the fiscal front, this is our main preoccupation, get countries to have strong foundation through expanding tax base and improving tax uh, collection uh, through debt management. You're still watching. Business Life, more after this break. And that's your Joy Business Van right there for you. And that is it for the program. I am Pios Kujubaka. You can always get business stories when you log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. We've got the very latest from the world of our commodities market.